welcome my dear student in the last session we have started in our subject science physics chapter 2 that is force and laws of motion in the last session we introduce chapter and some basic terminology like balanced force unbalanced force and take some example how balanced and unbalanced force apply on the object and what is the nature of object let's begin this session with one example suppose we are going in a car and suddenly we applied brake what will happen we suddenly move forward like this we feel some force in forward direction what had happened at that time when our car going in the straight direction in forward direction we applied brake which means we are stopping our car in certain time and place but our upper body that is still wants to be in motion we see term inertia what is inertia we define term inertia in last lecture so this is the example of inertia our upper body tries to be continue in motion so when we apply brake and stop our car our upper body still wants to continue its forward motion so it bend in forward direction suppose we are sitting in stand still bus and when bus started suddenly we felt jerk backward like this what had happened at that time when bus is at the rest our body also at rest when bus started moving our legs that is in contact with bus also start moving but our upper part of body that still wants to be in rest so our upper body oppose that forward motion by giving opposite reaction that is backward motion so i hope now you understood what inertia is so i hope now you understood what inertia is inertia is a tendency of object by which object tries to oppose change in its motion if object is at rest it wants to be in rest if object is in motion he wants to continue his motion and resist any kind of change is in motion that is inertia our first law of motion that is given by sir isaac newton is also based on this inertia that's why first law of motion is also called as law of inertia let's see what is statement of first law of motion basically three laws given by sir isaac newton on motion that is first law second law and third law first law as i said known as law of inertia Why Why? Because it is related with the quality inertia of object. So the first law of motion states that an object remains in the state of rest or of uniform motion. Object remains at the state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless. compelled to change that state by an applied force so object continue its motion or continue its rest 
until and unless it is do not apply by any external force so consider one object that is at rest will not move until and unless it is not exerted by any external force or if this object is in motion this object will continue its motion until and unless it is not exerted by any opposite or external force now you may have get question that sir if we go with our bicycle and if we stop pedaling our bicycle will stop at some point of time but this statement said that if object is in the motion it will continue its motion but remember in real world we have no such ideal surface that is frictionless our roads all the surface we are encounter with all our frictional surface that is we we discuss friction in last lecture so frictional force is always apply on our vehicle so our vehicle will stop at certain distance when we are also stop pedaling or we are stop accelerating them so that is the answer of that question now inertia and mass if i want to change position of an object i have to apply force on them for example if i want to change position of this marker i have to apply some force on it to move it i can easily change position of this object but assume i have one big stone over here can i move this stone with my finger no, of course not why not because this object this stone is very much larger and it has so much weight that i cannot move this rock with my force of finger so i cannot move this big stone with little force but of course i can move this marker with little force another example if i apply force on this wall will this wall fall down no of course not because force of my hand is not sufficient to down this wall so inertia is related with mass more the mass more the inertia let's take another example if you have seen brake of any vehicle let's say bike it has small brake pads you have seen you might seen brake pads that is in brake drum so bikes and scooter have small brake drum so bikes and scooters have small brake pads in small brake drums but you take a large truck do you think truck and scooter has same brake of course not brake pads of truck are much larger than brake pads of scooters and bikes why because trucks and buses have more weight more mass so it has more inertia to break motion of bus and truck we need more opposite force of brake to slow down this trucks and buses which compare to our bicycle scooters or motorcycles so you might understood that this inertia is related to mass more the mass more the inertia less the mass less the inertia
सो द मास ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज मेजर ऑफ इट्स इनर्शिया सो मास इज मेजर ऑफ इनर्शिया हाउ कैन वी मेजर इनर्शिया इफ वी कैन फाइंड मास ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्यूलर ऑब्जेक्ट वी कैन सम हाउ एज्यूम दैट इनर्शिया ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्यूलर ऑब्जेक्ट विल बी लार्जर और स्मॉलर दैट इज ऑब्जेक्ट हैविंग मोर मास हैज मोर इनर्शिया एंड वाइसा वर्सा इज ट्रू दैट इज ऑब्जेक्ट हैविंग लेस मास विल हैव लेस इनर्शिया नाउ लेट्स टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई हैव फाइव ग्राम्स ऑफ बुलेट फाइव ग्राम्स ऑफ बुलेट ऑफ गन एंड आई विल थ्रो दिस बुलेट ऑन यू विल यू डाई ऑफकोर्स नॉट विल यू हर्ट यू विल हर्ट माइट गेट अ लिटल बट दिस फाइव ग्राम बुलेट इफ आई लोड इन गन नाउ इफ आई शूट दिस बुलेट ऑन यू विल यू हर्ट ऑफकोर्स यस नाउ थिंक दिस बुलेट इज सेम सेम बुलेट ऑफ फाइव ग्राम आई थ्रो एट यू एंड यू विल नॉट हर्ट but same bullet if i load in gun and shoot on you you will get hurt which means force applied by this bullet is not only dependent on its mass but it is also dependent on its velocity if mass of object is more it will apply more force similarly if velocity of an object is more it will apply more force it will incident more force on another object if there is a truck standing still beside me it will not hurt me because its velocity is zero so i do not have to worry about this truck now consider another truck coming towards me with very less velocity let's say 10 km per hour very slow will it hurt me of course it will hurt me when it hits me why why so because truck has larger weight and also it has some velocity which means mass and velocity both will affect force applied by object so newton come up with the new term that is called momentum what is momentum the momentum of an object is product of mass and velocity momentum is simple momentum is mass multiply with velocity we denote momentum with letter small p and p is equal to m multiply v and si unit of momentum is kg meter per second how this kg meter per second can that is very simple p is equal to mass multiply velocity now we know that si unit of mass is kg and what is si unit of velocity that is meter per second so this whole unit is kg meter per second in our textbook it is written as kg meter second inverse so remember this kg meter per second and kg meter inverse both are same this is only a different method to write unit so kg meter per second or kg meter inverse that is si unit of momentum now we have another quantity called momentum this quantity is vector quantity now you know that what is vector quantity vector quantity is a such quantity that needed both value and direction which means to completely define momentum i need value of momentum and i need direction of momentum 
and what is direction of momentum direction of momentum is in direction of velocity if any object is moving in this direction i have to take velocity in this direction also momentum in this direction let's look into this momentum we have p is equal to mv which means momentum p is directly proportional to mass and momentum p is directly proportional to velocity which means we can increase or decrease momentum by two ways we can increase momentum by increase mass or decrease momentum by decrease mass or we can increase momentum by increase velocity or decrease momentum by decrease in velocity so remember p is equal to mv means p is directly proportional to m and p is directly proportional to v proportional relation are such relation in which if one quantity raises other quantity raises if one quantity decreases other quantity decreases so p momentum is dependent on mass and velocity now let's take other example if i hit this board like this very slow mass of my hand is constant velocity is certain velocity that is very slow but if i hit this board like this like this mass is constant velocity is more so which means momentum is more in first case momentum is less in second case momentum is more but if i increase this momentum which means if i convert this velocity into acceleration which means if i take rate of change of momentum i will get force which means if i get rate of change of momentum i will get force related to it so we have second law of motion that is dependent on momentum and particularly rate of change of momentum so let's first see statement of second law of motion that is dependent on momentum let's see statement of second law of motion the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to applied unbalanced force in the direction of force again the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to applied unbalanced force in the direction of force so we have three things here first is rate of change of momentum that is equal to unbalanced force and third one is its direction what is the direction that direction is in the direction of force applied on object so let's get mathematical relation of second law of motion first of all remember second law of motion is nothing but f is equal to ma remember this basic formula 
and this is very much important in all your higher standard as well as in this standard f is equal to m a you can remember this formula by father is equal to mother so f is equal to m a let's uh, get familiar with all terms what is f f is nothing but f is equal to force f is equal to force m is equal to mass and what is a a is equal to acceleration now let's talk about si unit of each and every quantity force has si unit as newton how this newton came because this law is given by newton and concept of force is also given by newton so in memory of newton we give unit of force as newton and we denote newton by capital n si unit of mass that is kg and si unit of acceleration we know by chapter 8 that is meter per second square or we can say meter second raise to minus 2 if we want to get unit of force in terms of kg meter and second we can derive it as f is equal to ma unit of mass is kg and unit of acceleration is meter per second square so we get unit of f that is force is equal to kg meter per second square or we can write it as kg meter second raise to minus 2 so 1 newton is equal to kg meter per second square so 1 newton is equal to kg meter per second square now if i want to derive this equation of second law that is f is equal to ma how can i derive this equation let's say i have one object with mass m and initial velocity of this object is u meter per second if i apply force f on this object so velocity of this object will may increase or decrease and let's say it has now velocity as v meter per second so i have one object with mass m initial velocity u final velocity v after applying force f so i have two momentum here that is p initial and p final initially i have mass m and velocity u and finally i have mass m and velocity as v so i have two momentum momentum initial and momentum final this is our initial condition and this is final condition now let's read statement of second law the rate of change of momentum of object is proportional to applied unbalanced force so this applied unbalanced force f will be directly proportional to rate of change of momentum first see what is change in momentum change is nothing but final minus initial so final momentum is pf minus initial momentum is pi 
and final minus initial that is change in momentum and rate of change of momentum that is change divide time again rate of change of momentum that is change that is final minus initial and rate is change divide time if you want to calculate rate you have to divide quantity with time so the statement rate of change of momentum is proportional to applied unbalanced force now i know let's put value of pf and pi here so i have mv minus mu divided t let's take m common here so i have m v minus u divided t now we remember formula of acceleration what is acceleration acceleration is change in velocity divide time so i can write v minus u divide t as a so i can write here m a how because v minus u divide t that is nothing but acceleration remember definition of acceleration acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity that is change in velocity divide time similar thing we do here that is change in momentum divide time we get rate of change of momentum so we got f is directly proportional to ma now i remove this for some time again i write f is proportional to ma here if i want to remove this proportionality term i have to insert one proportionality constant so i placed f is equal to ma and k here as proportionality constant and we decide value of k is equal to 1 Why value of k is equal to one? That is another topic. We will discuss it later. But let's say we take k is equal to one. What is k? K is proportionality constant. Remember, whenever we want to remove this proportionality term, we have to put proportionality constant. And this k here is proportionality constant. so we put k is equal to 1 here so we have f 1 into ma so 1 into ma is nothing but f is equal to ma in this way we got f is equal to ma let's summarize this session what we have learnt in this session we have seen what is inertia example of inertia what is momentum example of momentum second law of motion and how to derive formula that is f is equal to ma that is formula of second law and si unit of all this quantity so i hope you enjoy this session and understood all the concept we learnt in this session thank you very much